Threat Information Sharing is a system that allows an organization to share cyber threat information such as indicators, context, and analytics with other trusted organizations. It is a cooperative effect to reduce the effects and impact of cyber attacks. Through the course of information sharing, however, we are posed with some problems with either human error or malicious human intervention. Autoimmunity attempts to be aware of and mitigate some of these potential problems. Using a real-time, behavioral-based analytics approach allows us to constantly filter raw submissions through the broker to minimize noise. Submissions and indicators that are classified as above or below the threshold will be funneled into another pool that may require secondary review. Autoimmunity includes rules filtering and pattern-based filtering. Our experiment focuses primarily on the behavioral aspect of a given producer. Does this indicator seem out of the ordinary based on its typical behavior? As part of our autoimmunity integration effort, three baseline producer profiles will be created to emulate three different types of organizations. The first of which will be a profile for the generic ISAC, the second of which will be a capable organization, but smaller than the former and thirdly, a smaller company. The specifics of each type of behavior will attempt to emulate the characterization of data for each organization based on an actual threat feed. Once a baseline is established, we're also able to introduce deviations in the feeds to show that our analytic can catch and filter out these out of character messages. Here, we have the basic workflow of our proof of concept. This will be shown in real time in just a bit, but I'll take the time now to explain each component. The Stix Taxi Raw Threat Intel is generated by our Stix Generation tool as part of one of the profiles mentioned earlier. As these messages are published to the broker, we have a cabbie client polling and translating this data into stream-based readable format and sending it to be analyzed. Inside Streambase, we have a basic sliding window analytic that checks the characteristics of each message, such as time, number of indicators, as well as types of indicators. For our experiment, we looked at various characteristics of each publisher and created a long-running behavioral profile. By using this profile and the sliding window analytic, we were able to filter out messages labeled as a nuisance and or possibly malicious. In order to manage state, we make use of three collections. One collection has all of these messages, and the other two are accepted and failed respectively. The failed collection allows the message filtered out by our analytic to be looked at later by some secondary review process, while the accepted collection goes out to the subscribers. This can be seen on the right as the blue autoimmune threat intel line. To help actually emulate an information sharing system, we have a number of subscribers showing that each one of the popular types of subscribers can subscribe from the feed. Shown here in the terminal, an example of our Stix Generation tool publishing messages to our open taxi server. Using the profiles for each publisher, we submit Stix messages generated based on the behavior of an actual organization. We have a number of these constantly running on our simulated enterprise to emulate a threat feed. Shown here is the stream-based workflow. While there are many operators on the screen, the key points are the use of a sliding window analytic to aggregate results and to correlate them with previously collected data in what we call a confidence score. The sliding window allows the analytic to adapt as the behavior of an organization changes. We have set a threshold in the workflow to only allow a certain score based on their previous behavior. This threshold is purposely smaller than the actual variance between Stix messages from our generation tool. Here is a sped up version of some of the data that our analytic has produced. Notice how the indicators eventually converge at a smaller range when its behavior is ascertained. A small thing to note is that our analytic model can adapt to different submitter profiles shown by the different colored lines. Next, we will move on to data that is relevant to the assigned threshold. This is a picture of untrained data. As you can see, without knowing what the behavior of a publisher is supposed to look like, Running the analytic in what we call enforcement mode yields erratic looking data. Now we have a sped up version of our analytic running into enforcement mode after it has been trained. What you're seeing here is the percentage of the Stix messages being filtered out by our analytic. Notice how the percentage of Stix messages that lie outside the variance threshold match the true values of our profile. After the analytic has run its course, 
we pushed the feeds into two collections mentioned earlier, failed and accepted shown by the red and blue arrows on the left respectively. The various subscribers in the simulated enterprise receive all of the accepted messages, while the field messages sit in a collection for secondary review. Here, we have one of the subscribers, Stacks, showing it has received the messages and its various indicators. Next, we look at the SOLTRA dashboard with all of the threat intel that it has pulled from the feed as well. Third, we have Carbon Black, an endpoint protection service, showing it can pull from the feed and possibly take action on the messages received. These three subscribers show that it is possible for an environment to use any of the subscribers currently being used in the architecture. This concludes the overview of our Spiral 9 experiment. If you have any questions, comments or concerns, feel free to email us at iacd at jhuapl.edu or visit the website on the screen. Thanks for watching.